Welcome back to the Rules of Engagement. Before we talk about game number four, but the Nurture and Baby Night, let me tell you guys about an amazing opportunity to get a lot of awesome hardware for free. All you gotta do is go to facebook.com slash mlgpro. Scroll down just one or two notches. A notch is an official unit of scrolling. And then, of course, you get to this page called the Dr. Pepper Ultimate Gaming House. There it'll give you a little bit of brief instructions on how to fill out a very short video and submit it to them, no more than five minutes in length. All you do is you talk about yourself, why you are the ultimate gamer, why you should uh, be given this ultimate gaming award, and show them a little brief video about the room you want to be made over. And if you win, they'll come in, they'll set you up with all the latest gear, thousands of dollars of hardware, software, whatever you need in your gaming system to basically uh, have a, an amazing time. You could literally, once they set you up, you could go in that place, bring 10 years of food with you, and never leave. Like you're, you're basically set for life. So it's an awesome opportunity if you're, you know, you, you want to get the latest games, but you can't quite afford the new computer, the new system. Submit this video and tell them why it would help you out and make you an awesome fan of Dr. Pepper and MLG. Maybe you'll get lucky and, and win a thousands of dollars of different hardware. So that wraps that up. Let's talk about game number four between Nurchio and Baby Knight. First, we'll talk about how to defend small pushes while teching. Of course. Prodos and Harlow Swarm has all these new small push options. Then we're going to talk about how to execute a small push in PvZ from the Prodos side, and then how to make strategic decisions based on the game state. So there's a lot of strategic decisions being made in StarCraft 2, uh, and one of the coolest things when you, when you see players react and make ones change your plan or make a plan based on the, the current state of the game and, and to optimize that, basically. So starting out here, Nert, we'll talk about Nurture's build again. It's going to be kind of similar, as we can see, he's, he's got the gas, he's got the relatively fast Lair, the relatively later third base. And as we play this out, we're going to see that he's actually going to be teching to Mutilus. So as we jump up here, we can see, as his Lair finishes, he's going, to, um, he's going to go ahead and get himself that Spire, right? And now, one thing as a Zerg player, if you're doing this very, very fast Mutilus tech, one thing you should keep in mind is that uh, because you're going to have much less drones here, there's two things. One, this third base is less important. Two, you have much less minerals to play with. If you're taking this fast, your solution to mass gateway aggression or two base immortal pushes is to build a bunch of spines here, sacrifice your third base, and then later, and then you'll be playing two base to two base, but your opponent will not have tech available, and you're going to have those mutilists out to help you fight them. So that's generally your game plan when you're going for me list. The third base is kind of a disposable thing. And also you're short on minerals. So uh, one of the things you can do though is a small push, right? A small push like this type of army. It's very important, especially if you invest in Zergian speed like Nurture did, to, to basically get a small squad of Zergians. What the small squad of Zergians will do is they'll both make it a little bit harder if your opponent take a third base if you have 16 to 20 speed beams. And they'll make these push outs not very worthwhile, right? Because 20 speedings can really punish a push out like this, or it'll at least make the Protoss think twice by moving out. They'll slow the push out down, and it can reinforce with a few more speedings. Now, what Nurture decides to do is he decides to react to this push out by building a Roach Worm. He built it somewhere. Here he is, Roach Worm, getting Roach Speed, and getting a bunch of Roaches. Now, I don't really like this that much because Roaches are a unit that isn't particularly cost efficient. But what they they are good at doing, right, is they're good at overwhelming an opponent. But if you think about it, the fact he's really wanting to get those mutas in the lair play out. He's already sacrificed an economy to get that lair tech out. Just building the Roach Warren alone is the same cost as eight speedings. Not to mention the Roach Speed is, is another big cost, and each Roach is worth as much as four speedings. So it's not a very efficient way to hold off a small attack. If you want to really use Roaches to overwhelm an opponent, you should take the expansion first, get the lair built later because it's not quite as important if you're not going to use it anyway. If you want to go the fast lair, speedings are going to be your key to early map control and to hold early pushes because you can produce them fast, they can stop a push before it even gets across the map, they can, they can put your opponent on the back foot as they're worried about speeding aggression, as opposed to going Roaches, which eats up an enormous chunk of your economy and, of course, uh, will just slow your lair transition as well. So we can see here... Uh, on the other side, Baby Knight's push is going to be very, very strong here because even though there's so many roaches, they can easily kill this army. Because they're not speedings, they don't pr they're not produced until the army's already crossed the map. And then also because they're not speedings, 
They have a hard time. You see they're, they're hustling over here. Takes them much longer to get to defensive position, which gives the Protoss opponent a much more opportunity to go ahead and kill us their base. Now, the one thing that's key about Blademan's composition here, right, is it's sentries and zealots. So zealots and sentries are the ideal force as a Protoss player to go ahead and snipe that third hatchery with a small push-out. The reason why is just look at the stats. Zealots are Protoss' best damage per second per cost unit in the game. If you want to kill something fast and you know you can get up close to it, Zealots are your best bet. They do more damage per second per cost even than Immortals vs. Armored, even than a Colossi hitting like four units. Uh, well, it'd be about three units. But basically, Zealots are, are, are the ultimate damage machines from the Protoss army. Now, of course, they are me they melee, but a hatchery doesn't run away, so it's okay to have a melee attack against hatchery. Sentries are great because you can zone out the opponent's forces to let the Zealots go and do their job. So Zealot sentries, a great small push out. Sentries zone out the forces. Zealots chop down the hatchery. And then as you can see here, as soon as you get, kill the hatchery and get that knocked off, what you can do is recall out, lose, lose a sentry to a couple Zealots, but puts you in a very strong position, especially if your opponent is going roaches. If your opponent was going muteless, uh, two base versus two base would be, it'd be actually fine for the Zerg. But in this situation, the Zerg player is not going muteless. Um, even though he devoted some cost to that, he's really going to Roaches. And, and that puts the Protoss in a great position. And that's the next thing to talk about here is going to be making a strategic decision based on the game state, right? So this is the game state as far as Baby Knight knows. My opponent's on equal economy to me, right? Basically the same thing. Two base, two base, he's got a few more workers, but basically equal economy. He's on equal economy, but what does he do? He knows that he's also built a lot of roaches because he saw those roaches attacking his zealots. If I'm an equal economy and my opponent is on low tech units, what does that mean? Well, that means uh, that all I have to do is get an anti-roach army and I'm going to win the game. Right? So I'm going to focus on upgrades and blink because this is an anti-roach army I can get relatively quickly. Just use warp gates, get a bunch of blink stalkers, a bunch of upgrades. Of course, make sure I don't die. And then once I get this anti-roach army, I can develop a timing that uh, I can move on and kill him. And the reason why this is a great decision in this circumstance because he, he knows he's on roaches and he knows that he doesn't have economy, which means he's going to have a hard time transitioning out of roaches, right? If, for example, he knew he was on roaches but the Zerg was on four bases, by the time you get the 2-2 two -two and the blink, maybe they've also got like 10 infestors or maybe they've switched over to like a billion spine cores and 30 billion mutilists then you can't do that. But Baby Knight knows that his economy is not that great, so it is a perfect opportunity to go for it. I have, I have about five minutes before my opponent can even really get anything going, rebuilding that economy, and having it kick in, in into gear and get some new units. So as long as I, I design a timing that'll hit four minutes after that push, I'm in great shape. That's exactly what he does. Goes through his 2-2 two -two and blink, and hits a perfect timing once he has a very, very powerful anti-roach army. Uh, great upgrades, uh, blink micro, force fields, time warp, all this is going to mean, even if Nurture is on 200 food, this type of composition with this type of upgrades at about 120 to 130 food will beat 200 food roaches. So it, it's a beautiful strategic decision made by Baby Knight saying, I killed his hatchery and he went roaches. There's no point taking a third and playing a long game, even though I could. That gives him a chance to get back in the game. All I've got to do is hit this timing and because he has no tech, and he has equal economy. There's going to be no way he can stop this. I'll just move across the map. I don't care if I'm on creep, because if I engage now, I know I've got the better army. I've got good blink micro. I can just overwhelm the, the relatively meager Zerg forces and push through for, for a win. So beautifully played by Baby Knight there. Uh, an amazing series. He goes on to take that, or that was the fourth game. He took that series 3-1, to one, showing uh, great strategic game sense in Nodger Heart of the Swarm. Nurture, of course, we saw on be with Star Station. Great knowledge of engagements and, and basics or concepts. Not quite as much experience with Heart of Swarm as Baby Knight. Uh, Baby Knight just put together some beautiful play there. One net series 3-1. to one. That wraps up uh, this game number four of Rules of Engagement, but take a short break and be right back with the question and answer period. <laughs>